Good morning, or good morning. Good afternoon. How are you? Hi, Christina. Hello there. Can you guys hear me okay? I'm gonna make sure everybody can hear me. Well, just let me know if you can't hear me. You can type me a little message there. All right. Type a message here. Okay, that's okay. I can hear you. Oh, good. Good, good. All right, so I'm at the library again and can't talk. That's no problem. No worries. Feel free to, you can still read back with us if you like at the end of class. Just you don't have to read back, but you could follow along if you would like. So, all right, we'll go ahead and get started. Let me mute everybody. That way. Anybody jumps into class, we won't get interrupted. All right, let's start off with some common words. Get our fingers going. Here we go. <clears throat> Heard, called, nice, does, for, payment, special, leave, read, saw, statement, remind, mind, six, along, bring, found, myself, reason, around, Report, town, following, left, summer, seem, interested, either, price, reference, used, isn't, didn't, probably, coming, general, show, meeting, bank, request, question, meet, end, position, subject, address, least, full, ten, asked, according, effect, stated, Thanks, Factory Tuesday. All right, let's do some common phrases. So you're gonna phrase as much as possible. I'm just stating this. I can't believe we're already on the 31st of May. It's crazy. All right, here we go, ready? When you were, where were, where you were, whether or not you were, whether you were, which were, which you were, who were, you were, what about, what are, what happened, what happens, what have, what he, what he believed, what he believes, what he can, what he cannot, what he could, what he feels, what he felt, what he had, what he is, what he knows, what he recalled, what he recalls, what he recollected, what he recollects, what he remembered, what he remembers, what he shall, what he should, what he thinks, what he understands, what he wanted, what he wants, what he was, what he will, what he would, what I am, what I believe, what I believed, what I can, what I cannot, what I could, what I feel, what I felt, what I have, what I have been. <clears throat> All right. Now I've got some contractions. These are sentences with contractions. Here we go. We haven't got it. He doesn't expect to win. We aren't in agreement. He won't testify. Don't mention it. Dogs won't be allowed in. You can't miss the sign. He didn't buy the book. She wasn't in the house. Ted hadn't bought the lot. I don't like to watch that. The order isn't accurate. It isn't good to postpone it. He didn't learn to operate it. It doesn't make a difference. It shouldn't forget, or excuse me, I shouldn't forget the date. Doesn't the car run well? He didn't want to exercise. I won't agree to call you. We aren't ready to comply. It isn't related to your work. Elise wouldn't believe her. Anne hasn't read the letter. We couldn't even see a movie. The men wouldn't quit. Frank can't admit to it. Won't you read the sign? Didn't we pay that bill? The car hasn't been fixed. He won't take the bus. Wasn't there a copy for you? We don't risk much on it. The owner wouldn't agree. I didn't see it happen. Bill hadn't sneaked out. Steve can't see the point. He can't seem to fix it. Hasn't the witness arrived? Don't forget the alternatives. 
it wasn't anything to speak of. <clears throat> the doctors weren't with her. Didn't the women own the stock? The court isn't open. They'll be here soon. Nicole can't help you. They aren't here yet. We will pick the people who will go. Who will want to go first? That'll be a good idea. That'll be hard to get to. And then for that all, I don't know what you guys do, but I, I like to write it as T-H-A with the flag L for so it doesn't conflict with that will. I flag it. And then uh, who will, you can either do a W-H-O flag L or you can do W-H-A-O-L because wool would be without the H. So just a couple. Oh, and then I told you about uh, that'll. Oh, they'll. I do that as a long A. I don't know what you guys do, but I do T-H long A-L, they'll. So just a couple of um, options there. All right. Okay, so let's do some tingle tamers. Here we go. Unfurled banners, occupied territories, acknowledged protesters, going underground, river contamination, musical entertainment, immigrants involved, university scholarship, practical demonstration, sidewalk loudspeakers, investment scheme, working overtime, Delegates briefing, floating vessels, frightening thunderstorm, investigated complaints, re recent benefits, promptly corrected. All right, names and addresses. Here we go. Jeff R. Wilson, W-I-L-S-O-N, 25 East Ridge Drive, Greenwood, Indiana, 46142. Lori P. Natra, N-A-T-R-A, -A, Manitoba Department of Labor, 21 Second Avenue, Northeast, Minland, Idaho, 87210. Amy F. Boro, B-O-R-O, -O, 50 Wooden Drive, Easton, Connecticut, 06612 Larson Van Loan V A N L O A N Management Dynamics Route 1 Box 5 Burton West Virginia 26562 Mrs C A Goyle G O Y L E Owen Roberts High School Road or excuse me Route 1 Pottstown Pennsylvania 19464 C L Freeman F R E E M A N University of Waterloo Waterloo Ontario Canada N 2 L 3 G 1 Betty Odell O D E L L Ann Arbor Public Library 343 South 5th Avenue Ann Arbor Denise E Lotch L O C H 4336 South Louisville, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74135. Patricia L. Sharp, S-H-A-R-P, Route 4, Box 185A, Franklinton, Louisiana, 70438. Mona D. Ramon, R-A-M-O-N, 1750 Palmer Drive, Defiance, Ohio, Four three five one two. All right. Here are some medical words. These are just words. Here we go. Hydrochloride, codeine, treatment, splatter, IV, reproductive. Obstetrician, epicondyle, fracture, sigmoid, thermometer, phlebotomy, hypochondriac, subcutaneous, encephalitis, headache, gingivitis, pectoral, 
thyroid, temporal, orifice, ossicle, meninges, psychosomatic, patient, intractable, remission, diaphragm, prognosis, prenatal, immovable, osteoarthritis, myocardium, dermatitis, schizophrenia, ophthalmology, hypoglossal, and appendicitis. All right, one last drill before we move on. These are going to be final consonants that focus on final RL, final RLZ, RLD, and RT. Here we go. The tree trunk was gnarled. Animals snarl when trapped. They each twirled a baton. She wore a shirt and a skirt. One girl talked to the other girls. We received many laurels. I wish, or excuse me, I was really in a whirl. He left a dart in her heart. The sorrel whirled around. The admiral was at the airport. A swirl of wind hurled it away. Don't twirl if you are clumsy. Laurel and Daryl were sweethearts. We believe in a world court. Traffic was snarled at the mart. He took a snort from the court. Oral excellence is an art. I hurt my finger trying to hurl it. They used the port for a fort. She had snarls in her hair. All right. <clears throat> I thought we could do a fun little literary before we get into the more serious stuff. This is from the hat or the cat in the hat book. Okay, let me just date it. All right, here we go. Knocks in box, fox in socks, knocks on fox in socks in a box. Socks on knocks and knocks in a box. Fox in socks, on box on knocks. Chicks with bricks come, chicks with blocks come, Chicks with bricks and blocks and clocks come. Look, sir, look, sir, Mr. Knox, sir. Let's do tricks with bricks and blocks, sir. Let's do tricks with chicks and clocks, sir. First, I'll make a quick trick brick stack. Then I'll make a quick trick block stack. You can make a quick trick chick stack. You can make a quick trick clock stack. And here's a new trick, Mr. Knox. Fox on chicks and chicks on fox. Fox on clocks and on bricks and blocks. Bricks and blocks on knocks on box. Now we come to ticks and tocks, sir. Try to say this, Mr. Knox, sir. Clocks on fox tick. Clocks on knocks talk. Six sick bricks tick. Six sick chicks talk. Please, sir, I don't like this trick, sir. My tongue isn't quick or slick, sir. I get all those ticks and clocks, sir, mixed up with the chicks and talks, sir. I can't do it, Mr. Fox, sir. I'm so sorry, Mr. Knox, sir. Here's an easy game to play. Here's an easy thing to say. New socks, two socks. Who socks? Sue's socks. Who sews those socks? Sue sews Sue's socks. Who sees who sew? Who's new socks, sir? You see so, so. Sue's new socks, sir. That's not easy, Mr. Fox, sir. Who comes? Crow comes. Slow Joe Crow comes. Who sews crow's clothes? Sue sews crow's clothes. Slow Joe Crow sews whose clothes? Sue's clothes. Sue sews socks of fox in socks now. Slow Joe Crow sews knocks in the box now. Sue sews rose on slow Joe Crow's clothes. Fox sews hose on slow Joe Crow's nose. Hose goes, rose grows. Nose hose goes some. Crows, rose, 
rose some. Mr. Fox, I hate this game, sir. This game makes my tongue quit or quite lame, sir. Mr. Knox, sir, what a shame, sir. We'll find something new to do now. Here is lots of new blue goo now. New goo, blue goo, gooey, gooey, blue goo. New goo, gooey, gluey, gooey goo. For chewy, chewing, that's what that goo goose is doing. Do you choose to chew goo too, sir? If you do, sir, choose to sue or chew, sir, with the goo goose. Chew, sir, do, sir. Mr. Fox, sir, I won't do it. I can't say it, I won't chew it. Very well, sir, step this way. We'll find another game to play. Bim comes, Ben comes. Bim brings Ben broom. Ben brings Bim broom. Ben bends, Bim's broom. Ben bends, Ben's broom. Bim's bends, Ben's bends. Ben's bent broom breaks. Bim's bent broom breaks. Ben's band, Bim's band. Big bands, pig bands. Bim and Ben lead bands with brooms. Ben's band bangs and Bim's band booms. Pig band, boom bam. Big band, broom band. My poor mouth can't say that, no sir. My poor mouth is much too slow, sir. Well then bring your mouth this way. I'll find it something it can say. Luke Luck likes lakes. Luke's duck likes lakes. Luke Luck licks lakes. Luke's duck licks lakes. Duck takes licks in lakes Luke Luck likes. Luck Luck takes licks in lakes ducks likes. I can't blab such blibber blubber. My tongue isn't made of rubber. Mr. Knox, now come now, come now. You don't have to be so dumb now. Try to say this, Mr. Knox, please. Through three cheese trees, three free fleas flew. While these fleas flew, freezy breeze blew. Freezy breeze made these three trees freeze. Freezy trees made these trees cheese freeze. That's what made these three free fleas sneeze. Stop it, stop it, that's enough, sir. I can't say such silly stuff, sir. Well then, Mr. Knox, sir, let's have a little talk about Tweedle Beetles. What do you know about Tweedle Beetles? Well, when Tweedle Beetles fight, it's called a Tweedle Beetle battle. And when they paddle and battle in a puddle, it's a Tweedle Beetle puddle battle. And when Tweedle Beetles battle with paddles in a puddle, they call it a Tweedle Beetle puddle paddle battle. And when beetles battle beetles in a puddle paddle battle, and the beetle battle puddle is a puddle in a bottle, they call this a Tweedle Beetle bottle puddle paddle battle muddle. And when beetles fight these battles in a bottle with their paddles, and the bottles on a poodle, and the poodles eating noodles, they call this a muddle puddle Tweedle Poodle beetle noodle bottle paddle battle. And now wait a minute, Mr. Sox Fox. When a fox is in the bottle where the Tweedle Beetles battle with their paddles in a puddle on a noodle eating poodle, this is what they call a Tweedle Beetle Noodle Poodle, bottled, paddled, muddled, duddled, fuddled, waddled, fox and socks, sir. Fox and socks, our game is done, sir. Thank you for a lot of fun, sir. Oh my goodness. I'm sure that was crazy for you guys to write. <laughs> that was hard for me to read, so I can't imagine how hard that was for you to write. But good practice. All right. Now, let's see how are we doing. Oh, good. We're doing good. I've got some congressional record, and the subject is abuse. I'm going to start at 180 and I'll work my way to 225, okay? All right, you're going to hear violence, domestic, prevention, Atlanta, workshops, elderly, awakened, abuse, shelters, harassment, uh, neglect, awareness, dramatically, structure, ever-changing, insidious, spouses, psychological, reintroduce, stimulated, and grandparents. Okay. All right, here we go.
Mr. Speaker, today I would like to reintroduce some legislation which addresses the growing problem in the United States of America of domestic violence. Domestic violence takes the form of physical abuse and neglect. Domestic violence affects every age group, old and young. The last days of the Congress did not allow me to complete the business on this very important piece of legislation. At that time, I made the commitment to reintroduce this piece of legislation addressing the problem of domestic violence prevention and treatment. I have been interested in the problem of family violence for many years. I was a firsthand witness while employed on the police department for the city of Atlanta to the ever-growing problem of domestic violence. This involvement awakened and stimulated my awareness of the need for strong legislation in this area. The 2014 Child Abuse Prevention Treatment and Care Act created a response by the federal government to this problem. Today, we must seek to expand our efforts in this area to help other family members besides the children. In order to help the nearly 3 million Americans who are victims of family violence, this bill authorizes a total of $175 million over the next three years in the form of grants to state and local sources to establish shelters, workshops, and community-related activities. The need for this legislation is obvious. Violence has increased in the American home due to the ever-changing structure of the American family. Violence has increased against the elderly dramatically. Abuse includes not only physical violence, but mental and psychological harassment. We can no longer afford to stand by and watch our children, spouses, parents, and grandparents be subjected to this insidious form of abuse. All right. <clears throat> Got some opening statements for you. All right. You're going to hear Barnett, Julie Thrush, Chad Howard, Parole, Boyfriend, J.C. Penny, Katie Osgood, Leland, uh, Casting, Vordier, or Vordier, either way, okay. Uh, Planet, Scheme, Acquaint, uh, let's see, Ralph Murdoch. All right, again, I'm gonna start at 180, work my way to 225. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, since some of you are new to the jury experience, it is not my purpose now to make an argument. The opening statement is merely to acquaint you with the general scheme of what I expect to prove and what I expect the evidence to prove. It won't be in the form of an argument. It is more like a table of contents where you look ahead and see what the general scheme of evidence is expected to be. Now, it is important for this case to have an opening statement. We often don't give it because it is confusing and that there are a large number of people involved. Now you are already acquainted with Mr. Planet. He is the defendant in this particular lawsuit. Now Mr. Planet, I believe the evidence will show, runs a business in East St. Louis. It is a machine parts casting business. Now Mr. Planet had several employees there. He used to have 10 employees there. One of those employees was Ralph Murdoch. Ralph Murdoch, you will remember, was the other defendant in this matter until yesterday afternoon. Now, another employee that Mr. Planet had in East St. Louis was Mr. Leland, and you probably saw Mr. Leland, who was over there sitting in one of the chairs earlier yesterday. He also has a business partner, Katie Osgood. There were also other employees whose names may be mentioned, and those particular employees are the ones that you will hear a lot about. I believe the evidence will show that Mr. Planet's wife worked at the J.C. Penney Company some years ago, and while she worked at the J.C. Penney Company, she was acquainted with Mrs. Barnett, also known as Mrs. Newland. Mrs. or excuse me, Mr. Planet's wife was acquainted some years ago with Mrs. Newland, and Mrs. Newland has a daughter, that is Julie Thrush. You may remember that you learned about Julie Thrush yesterday during the Bordier. Now, Julie Thrush has a boyfriend named Chad Howard. So Julie Thrush is a daughter of a friend of Mr. and Mrs. Planet, and she has a boyfriend named Chad Howard. Now, as you learned yesterday, and as you can tell from the information that has been filed, Mr. Howard was on parole during this year, and still is for that matter, the evidence will show. 
All right. <clears throat> I've got one more for you. This is conference at the bench. Okay, let me just give you a word list. You're gonna hear uh, prejudice, autopsy, delineates, slashed, Conroy, struggle, reiterate, born, emotionalize, impartial, temperature, uh, decedent, photographs, coroner, documentation, preliminary, frontal, in flame, and document. Okay. Oh, and also you're going to hear people's special one. Okay. All right. So because this is our second one, I'm going to start this one at 200 and work my way to 225. Okay. All right. Here we go. Your Honor, I intend to offer these photographs to the coroner to assist him in his opinion. This documentation was introduced and that photograph was introduced at the preliminary hearing. It shows a frontal view of the decedent. This photograph, Your Honor, we would ask that it be introduced. The court has already reviewed the photograph and denied the admission previously without prejudice. Now that is people's special two. This photograph, People's Special for Your Honor, and a special exhibit introduced at the preliminary, excuse me, no, this is People's Special One, Your Honor. Those photographs become material, Your Honor, in the coroner's opinion as to the time of death. His opinion as to the time of death will vary from the opinion of Dr. Conroy. The basis of that opinion is because of the condition of the body, the indications of a struggle that indicates a movement of the body. Now, in his opinion, this would cause the body temperature to be different and distinct that or if there was no struggle. We would like to offer those for him for his review for the basis of his opinion. Further, I believe that these photographs have been discussed earlier in this trial. I would reiterate for the record that the same conclusions now that I had then on the same basis. I believe that these are necessary for this deputy medical examiner to give his opinion as to the cause of the death. He has the autopsy report there. The photographs provide additional information. In the autopsy report, if I am not mistaken, it completely delineates the position of the body and the stab wounds. I believe it indicates there is a cause of death. I believe these photographs are going to furnish additional evidence, number one, and the cause of death, and number two, evidence of a struggle. Now these photographs are not entered into the inflame of the jurors to the extent that they would emotionalize to the extent that they could not be fair and impartial. Also, there are indications in one of the photographs, and I don't want to go over that now, but that the coroner's opinion is that he was first slashed about the neck and then stabbed. That opinion is borne out basically in part because of those photographs showing that there are definitely or was not a large amount of blood spilled. There was a very small amount of blood and yet those wounds were extensive. Okay. Go ahead and do some Q&A. And this is going to start with the court. I'm going to start this at 180 and I'm going to work my way to 200 with this one. But then we'll, you know, do some others that where we'll start at 200 and work our way to 225. Okay, so this is going to start with the court. So it's four voice. Here we go. Very good. Any other questions? I have some additional questions. May I proceed? Yes, please do. Go ahead. Is your bedroom. Frank, in the front of the house or in the back of the house? In the back. I'm sorry, you guys. My watch is acting up, so I'm looking at this and trying to hold on one second. I think I just need to wind it a little bit. I'm trying to look at that and do my light board, so I'm, I accidentally hit the court instead of the witness. Okay. All right. Let's do that again. I'm going to start over. Very good. Any other questions? I have some additional questions. May I proceed? Yes, please do. Is your bedroom, Frank, in the front of the house or in the back of the house? In the back. And were you in bed when you heard the shots? No, I wasn't. Where were you? I was getting ready for bed. Where had you been that evening? 
I was at the movie theater over in New Jersey. The movie theater over in New Jersey? Okay, now what time did you get home? I got home around midnight, yes, about 12. Do you remember exactly what you were doing when you heard the shots? I was getting a drink of milk. So that would put you in the kitchen then? No, walking from the kitchen into the bedroom through the living room. So are the living, the bedrooms that you were going to, are they in the front or toward the back of the house? In the back. So you were walking towards the back of the house? Yes. In about what section of the house were you in? About right in the middle. In the middle of the house, how big of a home do you have? Three bedroom. There is a hall, I take it, that leads from your living room to the bedroom? Yes, there is. You were someplace down in the hall? Yes. Do you leave your front windows open at night with the blinds up or the drapes open or? We leave them open so that there is no, there are no blinds at all in your living room? Oh yes, there are. Those blinds cover parts of the living room window, I take it? All of the living room window. The entire living room window is covered with the blinds? Yes, and the drapes too. I don't take it that you are a fabric expert because you are a car expert. What kind of drapes are they though? Can you just tell me that? Can you describe them for me, please? Well, the heavy, the heavy double drapes with sheer linings. For the record, Mrs. Delaney, he has not said that he was a car expert. That is your statement. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, cloth drapes, heavy drapes? Yes. Is there something in this kind of fabric referring to a woolen material? No. Can you describe it? Like a gunny sack material. A gunny sack, are they sort of tan? Yes, with a very loose weave. Loose weave, are they on a rail that you pull? I mean, do they have a drawstring? No, they are on a curtain rod. And I take it at night you keep them closed? Yes, we do, or the blinds. So as you entered the front of your house, can you describe to the court as you entered whether you are in an entry hall or in the living room? In the living room. You walk right into the living room? Yes. To the right, is that the rest of the living room? Yes, it is. Can you go to the board here and give us just a freehand sketch of what the entrance to your house looks like? Well, can I put the board up here? The only thing, Mrs. Cypress, I am trying to think of the relevancy. I would like to see what his house looks like. Go ahead. If you bear with me a few minutes, I think it is highly relevant. I don't want to tell the witness what the relevancy is. I don't think we have any markers. Actually, I have got a picture in my mind. I don't. If I could have him make this diagram of the house, if you could just draw us a description very simply, what your house looks like, blocking off the exits and entrances of the rooms, and write the names of the rooms on it, please. Your Honor, can I have this document marked Exhibit A for the record? All right, Exhibit A. I am beginning to question the relevancy here. However, Mrs. Cypress, I will let you continue. So you indicated now that you walked in and you were going down the hallway with a glass of milk and you had something in your hand when you heard some shots? Yes, that is true. Objection, at no time did he say that. He didn't say the hallway. He was walking through the living room. Were you in a hallway? You want me to put down where I was? Sure, why don't you? When you first heard the shots, where were you? Do I have to decide whether I was in the hallway or living room or what? Now we are going to get this issue right. I think we all know what the issue is. I want to get to the truth, Your Honor. That is all I am interested in. Yes, we are too, Your Honor. All right, so let's switch transcripts. I'm just gonna date this real quickly. All right. Now I'm gonna start this one right off at 200 and I will work my way um, to 225. Um, see here. Yeah, we'll, we'll start with this one. Uh, 
All right, so it looks like plaintiff is questioning. Let me just make sure. Yeah, all right. All right, here we go. Ready? Other than that, do you have any recollection of ever having any contact with this horse? I know that you can't rule that out. I'm just giving you that. But other than that, do you have any? Not off of the top of my head, no. So would it be fair to say, doctor, that at the time that you originally came to treat this animal on December the 9th, 2013, that you didn't have any information and background about its temperament other than what they would have told you at the scene. Is that true? Yes, other than the fact that it was a young horse and that does carry with it some special disposition. Yes, oftentimes it does. Okay, and as a veterinarian that treats these kinds of horses, what precautions or what thoughts are going through your mind when you are dealing with the young or a young horse like you have just told us about. Well, sometimes they have a little bit more of a hyper temperament. They have more energy. Not always, but I have seen it both ways. Okay, let me ask you this, doctor. When you were out there, was it your understanding that this was the first time that this horse was trying to be loaded onto a trailer? The first time for that day? Ever. I'm not real sure if I know that. Did anybody tell you that? I'm not sure. Did you ask whether or not, I mean, is that something you would ask? Not typically, no. If the horse was injured and so on? Well, no, it had no relevance to the injury. Okay, I see. Then I would assume that you discussed with Mrs. Adams what happened, correct? Yes. Did you find out how the horse was cut? Did you ever go over and inspect the trailer and look and see what it was and so on? No, I did not. That wasn't important as to the infection or no. Okay, now did someone indicate to you that the horse was cut on the trailer? Yes, or cut while trying to be loaded. I'm not sure if the horse was cut herself or cut herself with her own leg or if she got cut on a particular part of the trailer or not. Do you have any mental recollection of this injury on the horse? I believe it was on one of the front legs. I believe it was on the inside of one of the front legs and the outside of the leg also. I believe there were two lacerations. I'm not sure, for sure, 100%, but I do believe there were two lacerations involved. And could you describe for me medically or otherwise what the presentation of the lacerations looked like? How many centimeters, how deep it was? What kind of tissue was involved? They involved the skin, and I believe I would say approximately, probably three centimeters, and the other laceration was a smaller one, probably a centimeter and a half. The depth was three centimeters. The length, the length, I see. And was there profuse bleeding when you got there? Not profuse, no. It was continuing to bleed or ooze. I believe most of the hemorrhage had been controlled, had been maintained. Did you need to cauterize or do anything in that regard? No. And as I understand it, suturing, in fact, was required? Yes, it was. Now, could you please tell me what you did relative to the suturing for preparation prior to the suturing of the horse? The wound was cleaned, and how did you do that? With soap and water? Is that a pre-package you have that in, or do you have a mix to mix it up, or what do you do? I used an ointment and a package to clean it. Then, okay, what did you do after you cleansed the wound? A local anesthetic was given. And what specifically was given? A 2% local anesthetic. Okay, is that a topical? It is injectable, and that is specifically detained for the localized area in which you intended to suture? Yes, that is right. All right, and I have heard, and I know you have heard in this thing, I understood there was some tranquilizer given to the horse as well. Yes, there was. Okay, and did you in fact give a tranquilizer to the horse? Yes. Is this injectable? Yes, it is. Okay, now this product, this tranquilizer that you gave, did you just give one dose or two, three, four? How many were there? Three tranquilizers. 
Okay, I see. Now in pounds or kilos, can you tell me how big this is? I know there's some dispute over whether this thing is a yearling or not. Somebody disputes that phrase, but whatever. How much did this horse weigh at the time you treated it? I would say approximately, I would say approximately 450 pounds or 500 pounds. Now, as I understand, it was about a year old or seven or eight, nine, 10 months old, as I understand it. Yes, you would agree with that from your recollection? Yes, I do. And the meds that you have just stated, the tranquilizers that you gave this particular horse to, are these a normal, might we say, triad of tranquilizers that you would give to the horse to calm them down for a procedure which you are going to accomplish? Yes, it is. That's pretty much standard in the industry, isn't it? Yes, it is. And can you give me the quantities of each one of those drugs that you would have given to this particular horse? Yes, please do. Okay, I gave 40 milligrams of one, 2.5 milligrams of another, and then after a few minutes, I gave another two milligrams of the other. Okay, so those specific amounts, is this something you would have given any yearling that you were going to work on? Is this something that is so common and so regular to you that you always give the same amount? Is that why you recollect it today? Well, those doses that I gave you were approximate, and it's about a quarter of a cc of each medication. The medication was four tenths of a cc, I'm sorry. And the it just depends on the horse. If he doesn't calm down, then I give him a little more. Okay, are these given in an injectable or three different kinds? Usually it is given together. So in other words, you have a little in the same syringe. Okay, so you, are, you have a little vial and these are all mixed together or do you go separately into the, it depends on the circumstances. Oftentimes we will mix them together in the same syringe. Did you do that in this case? I believe I mixed one of them and then the next two I mixed together. Okay, and tell me again the quantities that you put in. Well, it was approximately four tenths of a cc. Okay, all right. Now that would been that would have been one shot, and then it would have been one more shot. Yes, agree. Yes, it is. And you in fact gave this the horse that to your recollection. Yes. And where was it injected? In the jugular vein. And there wasn't any particular problem in this particular case administering that tranquilizer? Not that I recall, no. Is there some way that after you gave this first shot that we are talking about, the combined one, that you can see if it's been effective or not? Well, you can see how the temperament of the animal responds. And then based on the response of the animal, you would determine if you need to give the animal any more tranquilizer, which I did. I see, so the response time is four to five minutes. It is variable in a general parameter of about four to five minutes about what you look for to see if it is starting to calm down approximately. And there was a third drug, if you would again, I'm sorry, can you state that for me? That was the combination of the tranquilizer of the second one. Okay, now the other compounds, that is the two milligrams, and that would have been separate injectable, the first one into the jugular, yes. One after another, yes. The two injections, bang. Take the second one and bang, the second one, correct? You mean the first one and then I gave the second one. Yes, I believe in this incidence, I gave the first one and then initially I followed up when I saw that he was still, you know, uncomfortable after a few minutes with the second one. Okay, and why was that? for sedation to suture the horse's laceration. He was, he was wound up. Okay, but my question is though, relative to the first injection, you are waiting a few minutes. Are you checking to see if you get the desired effect and then you may option out of that second shot? Yes, and it all depends upon the animal. Usually we give the ACE and the ROM pain originally. Let's take that into effect. Then I decide if I need to give more if needed. And in this case, I only gave two. Okay, so you gave the two in this case, but no more, just two doses? Well, I gave two doses, the second dose, but I didn't give a third injection after that. Okay, now is that because you felt the horse wasn't for a, back of a, letter, a lack of a better term, tranquil enough to do the suturing that you needed to do? Yes, 
Now, after you had given the second injection, then I guess you waited a few minutes to see if both of the combinations of the drug was effective for what you needed, correct? Yes, all right. And then as I understand it, you started to suture the horse, correct? Yes, I did. And is it correct that after you felt that the horse was tranquil enough and it had the proper effect, so you could go ahead and do your procedures, is that what happened? Yes, it is. So what this horse was given prior to suturing would have been a total of a topical anesthetic and then the two injections, is that correct? No topical anesthetic. What did you say it was? It was injectable? Yes, it was lidocaine and it was injectable. Okay, and that's of course just to deaden the area where you can suture, is that correct? Yes. Now, was this horse up or down when you were doing the suturing? Up, and it could maintain its posture and position, of course, after the tranquilizers and so on? Yes, let me ask you this. Before you gave this horse the tranquilizers, did this horse seem to be excessively excitable or overly excitable? Is that the reason you decided on the tranquilizers? Objection calls for speculation as to characterization of the horse in relation to what, counsel? Well, she didn't like my question very much. Let me rephrase it. All I wanna know is, you have seen lacerations like this on horses before, is that correct? Yes, I am sure you have sutured hundreds like this before, is that correct? Or many, yes. With the laceration that this horse presented, do you give the local and then look at the demeanor and the activity of the horse to consider whether or not you need tranquilizers or more? Or would it be your standard of practice to say, no, when I suture a horse with these kinds of lacerations, you give a local and you give tranquilizers. I just want to know if it is standard practice. Or you look at the horse and you go, this one is a little hyper, I'd better give it a tranquilizer. The tranquilizer is given before the local because to give the local, you have to inject the area with a needle. They won't stand still while you stick a needle in their wound. Well, that makes sense, but let me ask you this. Do you just always tranquilize them in this general? I would say probably 99% of the time, the horses that I suture are usually tranquilized. All right, was there anything abnormal about this horse, its behavior, its demeanor that stands out in your mind as you sit here today? Well, unusual for the, I don't understand the question. Excitable, wouldn't you, he wouldn't stay still? I would say the horse reacted in a normal manner for the age of the horse. Okay, and it being a young horse, yes. All right, and then you went ahead and sutured the animal, is that correct? Yes, I did. Do you remember how many sutures it took? No, was it less than 20? Yes, you didn't see, you didn't have to staple the horse. I don't remember for sure if I used any skin staples or not. I may have, I do use those occasionally. I was just trying to get an indication of how deep. The wound was skin deep. Okay, no particular muscle tissue or other sutures or structures that were compromised that you could see? No, not all, not at all that I can recollect. All right, now after the suturing was accomplished, this, this was all accomplished by you. You didn't have any assistant help you, did you? Correct, was anybody holding the horse during the time you were doing the suturing? Yes, who was that? I can't remember if it was Irene or Diane that was holding the horse, but somebody was holding the horse. All right, and while you were actually doing surgery on the horse, did anybody tell you about the events that led up to how the horse fell that particular day? I believe there was a conversation concerning how the injury occurred. What, the horse fell on and so on? No, not particular. It was just that the horse got hurt while trying to load the horse. Did you have any understanding from the people that you spoke to out at the scene where the horse was when it fell and got cut? They were just loading it initially? Yes, I don't know if the horse fell initially. All right, all I'm trying to get at is, at some point in time, did you ask, was it on the ramp or was it on the inside? Did the horse back up or no? Did you get some understanding of more specifically where the horse was when it got injured and hurt? No, but it was your understanding there was some difficulty in loading the horse. Is that correct? Yes, and during the time that you were suturing and before Mrs. Tipping was hurt, did you ever gain an understanding of how many times this horse had ever been trailered? No. If in fact it had ever been trailered? No. Let me ask you this. With these types of horses, is there any sort of, might we say, training or initialization or familiarization for a horse before the first time you load it onto a trailer to transport it? 
Well, as opposed to any other breed? Yes, probably not as opposed to any other breed. Well, let me ask you this, with your experience of horses, is there some procedure by which somebody who is training horses will get a horse familiar with a trailer and get it ready to be loaded for the first time? I would say it's definitely an option, yes. Okay, is there something you know people have done to get a horse ready? For the first time, it is going to be trailered, correct? Occasionally. To your understanding, do you have any understanding of what a trailer will do to get it ready, so to speak? To trailer for the first time to familiarize the procedure rather than, or that is rather broad in what the trainer would do. What kind of a horse, what age? It is a kind of broad question. Okay, a yearling. Let's take a horse that is somewhat like the one that is involved in this incident. And let me just ask you this. If you were going to try to get a horse that was eight months, nine months, a yearling, onto a trailer for the first time, do you in some way try to familiarize the animal with the area of where you are trying to take it and the ramp and so on and so forth? I would say that is variable. Probably most of them that are loaded are probably familiarized at the time that the horse is loaded. How do you familiarize a horse with a trailer to your knowledge? I am not a horse trainer, so I don't know. I'm, I am a veterinarian. Have you ever seen anybody or in your experience has anybody ever told you about how to get a horse ready to get onto the trailer for the first time? I don't know if I had that in school. So you don't have any experience in that area, true? I have trailered quite a few horses. I grew up with horses since I was probably seven or eight years old. But as far as you know how trainers familiarize horses, I would assume that you know each trainer has their own method. How are we doing on time? Okay, we still have some time. Um, I'll read just a few more minutes and then we'll do some read back, okay? Let me switch transcripts. And I was reading at 225. All right, all of a sudden it got hot in my house. Whew. Okay. I'm going to start a, one of my favorite cases, the O.J. Simpson case, one of my favorites. All right. And this is the people, so plaintiff. Here we go. Is that the person you saw driving the Ford Bronco that night? Yes, it is. Showing you an exhibit that has been previously marked as People's Five. Can you tell me if you recognize the car shown in the photograph shown as A? Yes, I do. That's the exact car. That's the Bronco you saw O.J. Simpson driving in that night on June 12, 1994. It is, I can tell. And then the rims look exactly like the rims. They were flashy. And the back bumper and the two-door, it was all white. And you saw that car and you saw the driver very clearly? Very clearly. I could see his face, full view, looking at me. There was no doubt. Okay, if you know, can you tell us how far the intersection of San Vincent and Bundy is from the location of 875 South Bundy? I learned later that it was like two blocks. You don't know from personal knowledge. You did not personally ever observe the distance between the two locations. No, I never drove it myself. Okay, then don't tell us. We don't want you to guess. Can you tell us how you can be so specific as to the time that all of these events occurred? Yes, I can. I was trying to get to a market, which would have taken me about five minutes to get there. And I thought that it closed at 11. I had 15 minutes to get there and I wanted a salad bar and I had 15 minutes to get there, get a salad bar, and so I knew that I had to leave or I had left at quarter to 11. Thank you, nothing further. Okay, if any members of the grand jury have any questions, please write them on a piece of paper. They will be picked up by the bailiff. Okay, now did you in fact get to the store before 11 o'clock p.m.? Yes, I did. Do you recall approximately how much before 11 o'clock you got there? When I got there, I had eight minutes to get a salad bar by the clock in my car. So by the clock in your car, it was 10.52? Right. Did you drive straight to the store after you, after these events occurred? From there, I went to the store and pulled into the parking lot. And at the time I pulled into the parking lot, it was eight minutes. I was going to run in. I got out of my car and I ran in. I was going to go into there and they were open, but their salad bar was down. 
How long, if you know, do you think it took you from the point you left the intersection to get to the store? A minute or two, a minute. So you think you left that intersection at about 1050, approximately right. So you left the intersection and Mr. Simpson sped up Bundy, north on Bundy about 1050. Right, I was aware of the time because I was trying to beat the clock. Did the store close at 11 o'clock? No, it ended up closing at 12, but I didn't know that at the time. I should indicate for the record that the questions I'm asking now are from the grand jury. So noted, was the driver of the Nissan Caucasian or some other ethnicity Caucasian? Do you know if the gas station was open at that time of night? I couldn't, I don't remember it being open or closed. All I remember, there were lots of lights around. I didn't pay attention. Do you recall what Mr. Simpson was wearing? I remember it being something dark. I didn't see anything besides dark. Do you recall whether there were long or short sleeves that he had on? I think it was short. Do you recall seeing bare arms? I do recall or remember seeing bare arms, right. That's why I'm pretty sure it was short, sleeved. Okay, I have nothing further, Your Honor. Okay, are there any additional questions to be submitted from the grand jurors? Okay, can you estimate for us the distance between your car? I will ask you for two different points. You have demonstrated on the chart your car and the Bronco. And the first indication is where the box with the car with your initials and the Bronco is the box with the B in it. What was the distance between your car and the Bronco at that point? It was like from where I'm sitting to where they are sitting right there. So I guess estimate 15 or 20 feet. For the record, the grand jury advisor just pulled out a chart indicating distances and confirmed it would be an estimate of 15 to 20 feet. So noted, again, when you pulled across the intersection, excuse me, when you first made contact or first sighted the Bronco, how close were you to it? Well, from, well, he was right in front of me, probably, I don't know. I wanna say like almost from where I'm sitting to where he's sitting and where he went right beside me. I missed him by, I'm sure, inches. I almost hit him. For the record, the witness is indicating from herself to the court reporter who is now sitting maybe three feet away from her. So indicated, right. Does that sound right to you, three feet or closer? I mean, it was a white blur right in front of me. Okay, so let's stop there and do a little read back. All right. And this one is going to be defense. Questioning. I'm going to start the first one at 225, then 200, and then 180, okay? All right. Here we go. 35. Okay. And if we have time afterwards, I'm going to continue to read, okay? All right, here we go. 225. Was any surgery performed upon you? No, they didn't even sew up the cuts. After your hospitalization, did you return home? No, I was transferred to St. Thomas, which was closer to home. How long were you at St. Thomas? Around a week. I don't recollect just exactly. What doctors treated you while you were at St. Thomas? Dr. Needham, N-E-E-D-H-A-M. Does he have a particular type of specialty? Yes, neurosurgery. Was surgery performed on you at St. Thomas? No, I had a lot of tests. After your stay at St. Thomas, did you return home? Yes. How long of a period of convalescence did you spend at home? I was at home with a tutor for the first semester of my senior year of high school and until March or April of the next year. When did you return to school on a normal basis? April, but I can't remember the day. Were you bedridden during the entirety of this period? No, and at what point were you no longer bedridden? As soon as I got home, I was in the house most of the time, but not bedridden. What was the reason then that you didn't attend school regularly? Loss of memory, I had a lot of catching up to do, I guess. When did you commence tutoring or commence being tutored? about a week or two after I got home. Were you able to graduate with your class in June? I didn't go through the ceremonies with the class, but I finished school that year. Prior to the accident, had you ever been hospitalized? I had my tonsils out, nothing major. When did you have your tonsils out? How old were you approximately? About six. Were you ever in the hospital on any other occasion? When I was real young, about three or four, I had a bladder infection 
and I was in for a couple of days then. All right. Let's do it again at 200. All right. There we go. Was any surgery performed upon you? No, they didn't even sew up the cuts. After your hospitalization, did you return home? No, I was transferred to St. Thomas, which was closer to home. How long were you at St. Thomas? Around a week, I don't recollect just exactly. What doctors treated you while you were at St. Thomas? Dr. Needham, N-E-E-D-H-A-M. Does he have a particular type of specialty? Yes, neurosurgery. Was surgery performed on you at St. Thomas? No, I had a lot of tests. After your stay at St. Thomas, did you return home? Yes. How long of a period of convalescence did you spend at home? I was at home with a tutor for the first semester of my senior year of high school and until March or April of the next year. When did you return to school on a normal basis? April, but I can't remember the day. Were you bedridden during the entirety of this period? No. And at what point were you no longer bedridden? As soon as I got home, I was in the house most of the time, but not bedridden. What was the reason then that you didn't attend school regularly? Loss of memory. I had a lot of catching up to do, I guess. When did you commence tutoring or commence being tutored? About a week or two after I got home. Were you able to graduate with your class in June? I didn't go through the ceremonies with the class, but I finished school that year. Prior to the accident, had you ever been hospitalized? I had my tonsils out, nothing major. When did you have your tonsils out? How old were you approximately? About six. Were you ever in the hospital on any other occasion? When I was real young, about three or four, I had a bladder infection and I was in for a couple of days then. All right, let's do one more take. And this will be at 180. There we go. Was any surgery performed upon you? No, they didn't even sew up the cuts. After your hospitalization, did you return home? No, I was transferred to St. Thomas, which was closer to home. How long were you at St. Thomas? Around a week. I don't recollect just exactly what doctors treated you while you were at St. Thomas. Dr. Needham, N-E-E-D-H-A-M. Does he have a particular type of specialty? Yes, neurosurgery. Was surgery performed on you at St. Thomas? No, I had a lot of tests. After your stay at St. Thomas, did you return home? Yes. How long of a period of convalescence did you spend at home? I was at home with a tutor for the first semester of my senior year of high school and until March or April of the next year. When did you return to school on a normal basis? April, but I can't remember the day. Were you bedridden during the entirety of this period? No. And at what point were you no longer bedridden? As soon as I got home, I was in the house most of the time, but not bedridden. What was the reason then that you didn't attend school regularly? Loss of memory. I had a lot of catching up to do, I guess. When did you commence tutoring or commence being tutored? About a week or two after I got home. Were you able to graduate with your class in June? I didn't go through these ceremonies with the class, but I finished school that year. Prior to the accident, had you ever been hospitalized? I had my tonsils out, nothing major. When did you have your tonsils out? How old were you approximately? About six. Were you ever in the hospital on any other occasion? When I was real young, about three or four, I had a bladder infection and I was in for a couple of days then. All right. So we'll go ahead and read that back. And I know the captioner is at the library. So you just if you want to just follow along and see how you do in your notes, feel free to do that. And uh, Olivia, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. Why does everything seem so hard tonight? 
<laughs> no, it seems, I think it's the material because I feel the yeah. same way with my reading. I feel like it's been difficult to read. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah. 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 It, I don't know if everybody else feels that way, but even when I was reading, okay, she said, captioner's shaking her head, yes. And okay, so, I'm, okay, not just me, okay. <laughs> not just you. So, okay. um, Olivia, you have the choice. You can either read back with me a Q&A, we can rotate, or I can read the whole thing and you can just follow along. I'll try reading, I'll let you start and I'll see what I can read. Okay, just jump in when you okay. want, okay? Just say, hey, I'll take okay. that one. Okay. okay. All right, so here we go. Question. Was any surgery performed upon you? Answer, no. They didn't even sew up the cuts. Okay, I can think I can read the next one. After your hospitalization, did you return home? Answer, no. I was transferred to St. Thomas, which is close to my home. Do you have which was closer? No. Okay. no that's okay. No okay. worries. So which was closer to, oh, to home, not my home. Okay. okay. Closer to home. I think I said my. Okay. Very good though. Awesome. Okay. Question. How long were you at St. Thomas? Answer. Around a week. I don't recollect just exactly. And real quick, exactly. Do you guys do um, X, A, L? Um. No, I do exact and come back from oh, L-E. I love that one. So exactly, I do X-A-L. Okay. I love it. Yeah. So just a okay. heads up there if you want to use it. Okay, so I'll do another one because this is kind of a, this was kind of where it got tricky. Question, what doctors treated you while you were at St. Thomas? Answer, Dr. Needham. Question, N-E-E-D-H-G-M. Does he have a particular type of specialty? Answer, yes, neurosurgery. Uh, okay. Um, Try the next one. Um, I got, what is, uh, question was, was surgery performed on you Um, at St. Thomas? Yep. Okay. Answer no. I have tests. That's what I have. I just have, no, I have tests. Do you have a, do you have, I had a lot of no. tests? That's no. okay. So just a lot. I had a lot of tests. Okay. Good. That's okay. Just one word. Not a big deal. Okay. And then I have, I do the next question. After okay, you, yep. after you stayed at um, St. Thomas, did you return home? Answer, yes. Question, how long a period of convalescence did you spend at home? Answer, I was at home uh, with the cuts. I don't know if this. That's okay, with a tutor. I, I don't have, okay, I don't, I don't have this. Oh, for the first semester yep. of my senior year. Um, Oh, well, senior year, senior year of school. You have high school. Then I have a, high school. High school um, until March or April of next year. Of of the next year. Of the next year. Okay. Very good. Awesome. Question: When did you return to school on a normal basis? Answer: April, but I can't remember the day. And then question, were you bedridden during the entirety of this period? Answer, no. Question, and at what point were you no longer bedridden? Answer, something as I got home. Do you have as soon as? No, I just have as I got home. That's okay. So as soon as I got home. Okay. Uh... I was in the house most of the time. Most of the time, then I have bedridden. Okay, yeah, but not bedridden. Okay. okay. Good. And then just so you guys know too that, as soon, you probably already know this, as soon as you can do the S, N, S for as soon as. 
and what is it as many as would be s m s yeah as well as i use swells s w e l s but i know some people leave out the e but i, yeah, I do the, yeah you do that too yeah okay okay let's see here question what was the reason then that you didn't attend school regularly answer loss of memory i had a lot of catching up to do i guess and then question when did you commence tutoring or commence being tutored answer about a week or two after i got home uh, question were you able to graduate with your class in june answer i didn't go through the ceremonies with the class but i finished school that year want to take one um uh, okay um prior to the question i'm sorry question prior to the accident uh, um had you ever been hospitalized answer i had um i had no i can't figure out what i had that's okay i had my nothing major okay so no worries just three words that you're missing so i had my tonsils out and then nothing yeah. major. good nothing that's major. three words okay question when did you have your tonsils out how old were you approximately answer about six okay question were you ever in the hospital on any other occasion answer when i was young about three four i had a bladder infection i was in i guess i just have i was in for a couple of days then good so the only thing you were missing is the very beginning she says when i was real young just i was instead of i oh okay okay, okay. and then about three or four okay yep. very good perfect Whew. good job how, how are we doing on time oh good we have 10 more minutes okay so let me just do a little bit more q a okay And let's see here. I'm gonna do a little bit more of this OJ Simpson. I've always been fascinated with this case. <laughs> I was so happy when I got this transcript. <laughs> and it's the grand jury, but still, it's so good, you know? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I just, it's amazing how you know all these different people that come so obviously this person was on their way to the store that night when they saw him right right so and then there's a then after this it's the neighbor um or the people that live down the street that saw the dog so we'll get into that too oh, whoa all this stuff we never heard about yeah exactly yeah never yeah yeah, yeah. i know but i don't yeah. we heard it. i don't remember hearing any of these people it's like wow no. isn't that crazy yeah. okay all right yeah. So we'll go ahead and I'll start it. I'll read this at 200. Okay, now we'll okay. Kind of work our way down a little bit to 200. Okay. All right, so let's see. Um, all right, here we go. Was the side closest to you the driver's side? Yes. And the window was down? The window was down. Were you able to see Mr. Simpson's hands? I was, yes. Were you able to tell whether or not he was wearing gloves? I saw his, I didn't see any gloves. I saw a hand because I could see, I didn't see any gloves on him. You said that you have indicated to us that the Bronco was flashy. It's wheels, they sparkled in the light, the rims. I have nothing further. Miss Shevley, before you leave, please listen very carefully to what I'm going to say to you now. You are admonished not to reveal to any other person except as ordered by the court what questions were asked of you and what responses were given. In addition, you are not to reveal any other matters 
concerning the nature or subject of the investigation, which you learn during your appearance here, unless and until such time as a transcript of these proceedings is made public. Do you understand that? I wish to advise you also that a violation of this order can be the basis of a contempt charge against you. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. You are excused. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Clark, you may now proceed. People call Sakru Bostapi. Sakru Bostapi? Yes. Please raise your right hand. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give in the matter now pending before the grand jury of the County of Los Angeles shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, I swear. Please be seated. Mr. Bostapi, please state and spell your full name speaking directly into the microphone. S-U-K-R-U-B-O-Z-T-E-P-E. Thank you. If you would please state your name for the record. Sakru Bostapi. Thank you very much. Continue, counsel. Now, Mr. Bostapi, directing your attention to the date of June 12, 1994, as of that date, can you tell us in the general location you were living? I live at 11965 Montana Avenue. It's around 500, 600 feet from the crime scene. Okay, about 500 or 600 feet from 875 South Bundy. I guess so, yes. What are the major cross streets near your house? Bundy and San Vincent. And on the night of June 12, 1994, were you out that evening? Yes, I was in Torrance. What time did you get home? 11.40. Do you live in an apartment building or a house? Apartment building. When you got back to your apartment building, did you see something unusual? Yes, our upstairs neighbor was sitting with a big dog. It was pretty unusual. Had you ever seen that dog before? No. Did you, were you acquainted with any pets that lived in the building? Excuse me? Did you know of any other animals that may have lived in the building? Yes, yes. That dog that you saw, was it with someone you knew? No. Was the dog with someone you knew? Oh, yes. Who was the person the dog was with? Our upstairs neighbors, Stephen and Linda. Did they own any pets? Yes, they have one cat and one dog. That was not their dog, I take it? No. Did you have a conversation with him about that dog? Yes. After you had the conversation, did you do something with the dog? Yes, we decided to take the dog inside of our house and keep it overnight and give it to the animal shelter the next morning. Did you take the dog to your apartment then? Yes. How did the dog behave in your apartment? He was really nervous and he was going to the doors and the windows crying running around in the house, so it wasn't pretty nervous. The dog was acting nervous? Yes. Did you see anything unusual about his legs or his body? Yes, on the legs, they were covered in blood. Was it wet or dry blood? Dry. What did you do? What did you do with the dog? Well, we didn't. We didn't feel comfortable with the dog overnight. We wanted to take him for a walk because he was acting so nervous. Yes, and we thought we could possibly find the owners. Maybe they were searching for her or him, so we took him for a walk. When you took him out for a walk, did you lead him or did he lead you? I just let the dog lead us. Where did the dog lead you? We went to Bundy, turned left, and he went directly to the crime scene. When you say the crime scene, you mean, I don't know the address, but it's on Bundy. So the dog led you? Yes, right to the crime scene. As it, okay, up Bundy, did it behave calmly or can you describe how it behaved? Well, as soon as when we got closer to the place, he started to pull me a lot harder than normal and cry more loudly. He seemed to get more excited as he went up Bundy. Yes, he was. Were you walking north on Bundy at that point? We were walking from San Vincent to Wilshire from north to south. So you were walking south on Bundy? Yes. And the dog seemed to get more excited as you got closer, as you went farther south on Bundy? Yes. What happened next? And it wasn't so far. We were walking on the right side of Bundy on the walkway, and then the dog stopped, and he turned right, and he looked right at her. And I turned right, and I looked too to see where he was looking, and I saw her body. 
Where did the dog stop? Was it in the street, on the sidewalk? On the sidewalk, was there a path that intersected with the sidewalk at that point? There was an entrance to the house. A path leading to the house? Yes. Did the dog stop there? Yes. Did you stop as well? Yes. What did you see? I saw her body laying down on the ground all over the entrance. Can you describe the lighting condition where her body was? It was really dark. It was real dark. Only the street lights from, from the back, opposite side of the street. And there was a big tree just in front of the street, so it was really dark. So had the dog not stopped, would you have noticed this woman lying there? Oh, no. Was there any light coming from the building, the house? Not as I remember, no. Have you walked down that sidewalk since that night, at night? No, no. You have not walked on that street since then? No. When the dog got to the location at the sidewalk and passed the house, did the dog stop? Yes, the dog stopped and turned right and looked right at the bodies. Then you looked in the direction the dog looked? Yes, I'm going to show you what has been marked as people's one. I'm just going to show you the top three photographs and ask you if that is the location and the condition in which you found it when you saw it. I'm not going to show you the rest of these photographs. Yes, yes, that's the location you are describing. Is that woman you have described seen lying down? Yes, it is. What did you do after you saw her? I called to my wife and yelled, call 911, and we crossed the street and knocked on one of the house's door. No one came to the door, so there was somebody walking on the street to her car, and we said to her that she needed to call 911, but she drove away. Then we knocked on another person's door and said to him he needed to call 911 because there is a body there. Now, did you go anywhere near the body? Not any further than the sidewalk. So you stayed on the sidewalk? Yes. You did not walk up the path at all? No, I did not. Did the dog get near the body? No, he did not want to. I mean, he just sat there. He stayed by you? Uh-huh. Is that a yes? Yes. Did you see the police arrive? Yes. Did anyone walk up to the bodies or anywhere near the bodies before the police arrived? No, no. Did you see any other bodies lying there other than that of the woman? No, only the woman. I have nothing further. If any members of the grand jury have any questions, please write them down on a piece of paper. They will be picked up by the sergeant at arms. I'm sorry, I have one further question. Go ahead. Do you recall what time it was when you took the dog out for a walk? Well, it was around two minutes before or two minutes after 12. You got home at what time? 1140. Are you familiar with the building outside of what you saw where the woman's body was lying? No. So you don't know if it's a condo or several units? No, I didn't know. Okay, no further questions. Are there any additional questions to be submitted from the grand jurors? Where was the dry blood on the dog? Four legs. On his four legs? Yes. There being no additional questions, Mr. Bostopi, before you leave, please listen very carefully to what I'm going to say to you now. You are admonished not to reveal to any other person, except as ordered by the court, what questions were asked of you and what responses were given. In addition, you are not to reveal any other matters concerning the nature or the subject of the matters concerning the nature of this investigation, which you learned during your appearance here, unless and until such time as a transcript of these proceedings is made public. I wish to advise you that a violation of this order can be the basis of a contempt charge against you. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. You are excused. The people would like to call Bettina Rasmussen. Bettina Rasmussen? Yes. Please raise your right hand. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give in the matter now pending before the grand jury of the County of Los Angeles shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. All right, we'll stop there. Wow. That's, I didn't, wow, that's can, interesting. Can you believe that dog took them all the way? Yeah. They live like what, around the a corner. He might, it has to be somebody's dog because... It's so amazing how animals are. You know, he was he was agitated. Bless, oh my God, the poor dog. I you know. know he, he 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 wouldn't rest until he brought them somebody to that scene. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Wow. Like animals are so 
they're just amazing, yeah. you know? And yeah. like the guy said, he would not calm down in their apartment. Right, so. until, until he had to go. But, you know, thankful they were smart enough to take him for a walk. To yeah. See, you know? I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they could have just like rinsed him off and then said, okay, we'll just take him tomorrow to exactly. the vet or yeah. to the yeah. Yeah. animal yeah. shelter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But isn't that kind of creepy exactly. to know that that dog was covered yeah. like in their blood and walking it? I know, I know. Yeah, because he was walking through it. Oh my gosh, how sad. Yeah, yeah. I know. And they're Ooh. probably thinking, where is this blood coming from? You know? From. Well, because first I thought the dog was hurt. I said, well, no, because he wouldn't still be up walking around. But mm -hmm. it was, wow. It Whoa. was their blood. Yeah. Ooh. I know. It is. It's pretty, it, it, listen, you know listening to or you know hearing this it's like wow and i'll just keep reading to yeah that. yeah so yeah because i was reading i was listening i'm like oh my gosh i stuff you never hear and it's true what they say you yeah. don't hear everything in the public you don't you don't you don't no. so yeah no, yeah it is. it's so well and i was reading um the transcript from i don't know if you have netflix but it's called the making of a murder uh-huh and um they i watched it and i was like wow like they framed that guy like the, you know, it's about this guy that they make you feel like they framed him, but then you read the transcript and it's like, no, they had evidence like, cause he like took this poor girl and put her in a burn barrel and it was oh, awful. It's awful. Yeah, yeah. It happened back in Wisconsin and um, Ooh, now there's okay. a documentary on, on, uh, on Netflix about it. Oh, okay. Okay. It's called the making of a murder. And you let, you watch that and it's like, it almost makes you feel like they framed him, but then you listen to the evidence like, whoa, no way. They had, they, they had the they evidence. Had, yeah. 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 So it's just, yeah. you know, it's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. 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 It's yours. They hear things that we don't hear. So you don't hear. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And like, you know, that's so, you know, funny. You can kind of see why they walk, they have a face, their faces like you guys don't know all the facts. That's right. You don't, you don't know what we have in that's front right. of us. You know, okay. what you're seeing in newspapers, TV, it's, that's not, no, it's that's not. That's right. And yeah. it has to be beyond a reasonable doubt. Reasonable doubt. So if you have exactly. any doubt, yeah. then it's, it, they're not guilty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's pretty amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, yeah. Wow. Well, all right, Olivia. Well, have right. a wonderful evening. You too. You too. Oh. See I'll see you next week. Okay, sounds good. Okay, have a good weekend, okay? okay you too. Okay. You too. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay,